Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Credit Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today's just a fun little video on watercolor and some black and white doodles. Uh, I really like the contrast of using a simple pen against some fun vivid colors of watercolor. So these are just a few samples here that I was playing with. And then I got into maybe a little bit of um, some design elements, I suppose you could say, where I really like the shape of the organic matter that I was drawing and then something more geometric behind it. Um, this one here too, I was having fun with the with the leaves wrapping around the outside of the uh, perimeter, just something fun to try. So I thought we'd uh, do a couple today. Um, I'm just using a watercolor pad here. What have I got today? I am using my uh, Artist Loft, so it's from Michaels. It's 140 pounds, and it is probably cold pressed, I'd imagine, if it's cold pressed at all. Heavy, yeah, cold pressed, heavy weight. So it's a it's a decent watercolor pad for uh, these types of um, things to try. I'm just going to trace around a piece that I've already cut. Uh, you can tape it off, of course, if you like a nice clean edge but I'm just gonna have some fun. These make really nice little inserts. You could do book um, covers with these. You could do cards. You could do all kinds of fun things. I like to just have these on hand, ready to go to insert into journals. And uh, then I, I'm just good to go with all kinds of little goodies. Um, let's see here. I was using just this regular pen, but it's starting to run out of ink. So I'm going to use a, what have I got here? I think this is a Uniball. It's just a ballpoint pen. I'm not a big fan of this one. I find it, um, the ink, even though it's a ballpoint, runs quite quickly. And I like uh, ink to come out rather slowly. Uh, so I have a little bit more control. And I'm just going to doodle. So grab your stuff and let's let's do some doodling. So I'm just going to make some leaf patterns here. I like to work my way up the plant sometimes. I don't really have anything structured. This is just kind of out of my head. Now, of course, you can have a reference in front of you, which is a great idea. It's always good to have something to look at when you're drawing. But for these doodles, I'm just going to have a little bit of a free-for-all here. I might jump up here. Let's see. So I want to put some leaves in front. I kind of guess where I'm going to put them. And then put the stem behind. Because if you draw the stem straight up, then you can't put the leaves in front of the stem. Unless, of course, you're using pencil. So I see it has a big glob of ink there. That's what I don't love about these pens. You have to kind of experiment a little bit and find what it is you like to use. Sometimes, you know, the cheapy dollar store pens can be the best for a certain application. So this one should be bleed proof, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't used this pen yet. So we'll give it a go. And if it bleeds, it bleeds. So I like this pen. I'll show you. It's um, See how it leaves very little ink behind? So I can slowly build up my drawings when this one has got some pretty thick lines and leaves behind a significant amount of ink, which I find gets dark very quickly. So I like to experiment. What else have I got kicking around? Uh, let's get my rolly card here. So I have another black pen. Here's another one. Okay, good. So I've got this one back. So these two here look like similar pens. I have no idea where I got these. They must have just been a dollar store Find, but I absolutely love them. They are not bleed proof. They're just a cheap pen. They may bleed. They may not. But I definitely like them much better. 
So it's important to experiment with some different mediums, um, not mediums, um, different tools and, and find what it is you like best. You know what it's like when you're writing a letter or something or writing notes and you find the pen where your handwriting looks the best? <laughs> Does anybody else have that? Because I have horrible handwriting. And every now and then I'll find a pen that really helps my handwriting improve. So it's the same for drawing. Find something you really like. So I'm just putting a little bit of texture in these leaves. A little contrast in there. Not spending hours, because again, these are just doodles. Just have some fun with it. I'm just going from the middle of the leaf out to the side. These little doodles to your great practice for pen control or pencil control, whatever it is you're using. You know, you're not putting hours into a drawing, you're just practicing and it's a good way to practice your skills and how to put pressure on the pen when you want it how to do a light touch when you want it, keeping your lines the distance you want. So when I'm doing this, I'm not going way outside the lines. That's also a form of control that you wanna practice. So that when you go into some serious drawing, you have a little bit more control over your, your pencil or your pen. Okay, I like that one. Sorry, my camera shakes. I still have not fixed that issue yet with the um, shaky camera. Uh, I have to figure out a new camera mount. Sorry about that, just have to bear with me a little bit. Let's do one of these here. So I was having fun bringing it outside the perimeter, having the, the leaf just wrap right around Thought that was kind of fun. And I'm just gonna put some random leaves here in front and now build up the background. So when you're drawing, it's nice to have pieces that cross in front and pieces that cross behind. It just adds a little bit more interest to your sketch. This one here. And this guy can go right behind. Maybe grab the side here. So you see I'll break because I, if I draw right across, then I'm telling the viewer that both of these are flat. But if I stop and break and then start my texture behind it, then you can tell that this leaf crosses behind everything. And this one is in front. Just fun ways to build up some form and interest in your sketches. So these little thumbnail doodles, I call them, because they're a little form. I'm not going a full sheet. I find breaking up into these little thumbnails takes a little bit of pressure off a giant blank page for a lot of people. It can be intimidating um, to have to sketch on a blank, massive blank page. Uh, people not sure what to sketch. So these little doodles are perfect for that. I really enjoy them too because they're not time consuming and they don't, they're, uh, I can turn over quite a few of them relatively quickly. There we go. I like that one. Let's do one more. I should be working this way to this way so I don't rub in the ink, but that's me being organized. Um, let's do maybe something pretty bold here. You can get inspiration for these leaves in just about any 
any place you decide to look. You know, just go outside in your garden and pick up a leaf. And of course, you don't have to use expensive watercolor paper either. You can just use anything you have. I don't like this leaf. I feel like he's really long. So I'm going to change the shape of him just a little bit. So on camera here, I usually do okay, but sometimes I'll sketch something and I don't like it and I'll toss it out. I don't love everything I do. It's easy to see in social media and think the people you watch are really good at what they do, but they make mistakes like anybody else. They just film the good stuff. <laughs> so if you get a little frustrated with your sketch, it's totally normal. You're not the only one to get a little frustrated. As you can see here, this one, this one I don't like, but it is what it is. I'll try and make it work. And if not, I'll just toss it in the recycle bin. So this one will do pretty dark. This one is dark and then maybe one more coming up here and take your time and color each leaf in individually Stem a little bit. There we go. So this one I went much darker. Okay, let's try some watercolor. So I just got my Mei Liang paints out here that I use. Um, a couple of brushes. What else have I got? A uh, paper towel and some water. So these are a number two, I believe, and a number four watercolor paintbrush. So let's start with the four. And um, I was painting something yesterday. Let me just clean up this palette a little bit. I'm trying to practice some botanical paintings, larger size ones. And uh, I'm not very good at watercolor, I'm learning as I go. And uh, these little thumbnails are a great way to practice watercolor. So you can pull out a style of watercolor that you like and try and mimic it. Um, or you can slowly kind of build up your watercolor skills by just sheer experiments. You know, just really experimenting with color, um, technique. So for example, I'm just going wet on dry here in this corner, because I'm just going to play and see what happens. I'm taking my time inside because I don't want the blue and then um, sitting inside my drawing. I want my drawing to be kind of like a negative space there. And the focal point, almost the background. So while this is wet, I'll maybe take another color and drop it in and see what happens. And this is where experimentation with watercolor is great because you're not using up a full sheet. You're not using crazy expensive paper. 
but you're learning a little bit about how you paint, the colors that you like, the reaction these paints have to each other, color combinations and how they blend. So that was a brown that I used on there and it went green under the blue, uh, on top of the blue. So again, lots of fun learning. And there's a, quite a bit of science to watercolor. Um, especially when you get into the serious uh, quality paints. So these paints that I'm using are just a fun, affordable paint palette. But you get into the top end stuff and you can really see how to play with uh, color combinations, how you can create all kinds of different colors and how they react to each other. So again, just having fun. Just maybe dot a little bit here, see what happens. Let's take a little bit more intense pigment and see. And just have some fun with it. Relax, breathe. Don't think about it too much. Just go for it. So this side I might try wet. So I'm gonna wet the paper first. Hopefully I'm in frame here. <laughs> I never checked. I'm gonna wet the paper. So where you put the water is where the paint will go. So that was quite a bit of water. So I'm gonna spread that out. The more water you have, the more the the paint will pool, create these kind of bursts of dried edged looks of paint. It's kind of really cool. It's a great technique to use for things like backgrounds or um, cloud formations and things like that. It's atmospheric effects on your paint, on your painting. So you gotta experiment. So you can see the difference of when I'm putting it on wet on dry to wet on wet and the color bursts it creates and the flow that it has. And of course you can change the direction of the flow just simply by lifting your paper, your paper pad. So this has got a little bit less control to it. You're gonna let the paint, the nature of the paint do its thing. Now it's easy to overwork which is why I highly recommend if you're getting into watercolor to get yourself some really good paper because it will allow you to be a little bit more, um, what's the word, aggressive and uh, it's a little, it gives you a little bit more forgiveness in the sense that you can manipulate the paper a little bit more before it starts to break down. Cheapy paper will only let you do so much. So you can see the, the water that I put down dried up here or has almost dried. So again, the amount of water you use will have an effect. I'm add some water up here. Letting things dry in between too is a nice thing. Um, has a little bit more control. They don't bleed into each other. That's my biggest challenge is having the patience to let things dry. <laughs> Let's do the opposite. Let's drop some blue in here. So fun just to see what the paint does and then you can always use your paper your absorbent just to remove any extra if you overdid it so 
So now I'm getting more and more opaque here. I'm adding a stronger concentration of pigment. So you can have the light watery look. You can have something a little bit more intense. So much fun. You can do a lifting technique where you clean your brush, dry it off, go in and remove some paint. If you feel maybe this is a great technique to use if you're doing veining on leaves and you want something a little bit more accurate, you want to remove the vein, the color in the vein to brighten it up. It's a great technique as well. Lighten that up a little bit. I went a little heavier than I wanted. So I'm gonna let that dry a bit. Again, I'm starting on the wrong side. <laughs> I should have started. I should start over here because now I'm gonna put my hand in here. Oh well. Uh, let's do some different colors. Let's maybe do some purple. I don't usually gravitate to purple very often. I'm not a big purple lover, but it's good to work outside. Your comfort zone. Oh, where's Millie? My security alarm's going on. Hang on one second. Okay, hopefully she settled a little bit. I don't know what she was barking at. I'm sure she'll bark again. That's what she does. We're working on it. <laughs> She's eight months old now. Time flies. All right. So I'm just doing the little dry, wet on dry here. And this time I'm gonna pop a few colors in, uh, a few sections of this color. I haven't decided what other color to use yet. And I'm not going to go into the specific colors I'm using. You can just experiment with what you've got. It's uh. There's so many colors in this palette. And this is more of a pinky purple going in. And again, I'm just kind of putting it in, winging it, taking my time in between my sketch. And there's just something about the contrast I really like about this um, black sketch with the bright colors. I really like how um, how the sketch really stands out. I'm trying to talk and paint. It's a pretty color. I've been uh, I was practicing some. What are they called? Hostas, you know, the flowering hosta. So that's what these colors were on my palette. And just playing with some sketches on a big sheet. So they didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped. Uh, I had, You know how you have a vision in your head of how you want the final result to look? Well, I've been very challenged to try and get that look. I find um, it was, um, I just gravitate back to a certain style, I guess, when I paint. I'm trying to trying to break out of that style or my, my habit. And uh, it's difficult. So the, the look I have on my drawing, and I'll show it to you when I do a studio tour, because I've had a few people ask for a studio tour. I just haven't filmed it yet. Um, You'll see the, the sketch there, and it's just not the look I'm looking for. I've ordered a few books off Amazon of uh, botanical paintings. Not in, in structural books. One might be. I can't remember if I ordered that one or not. Um, but mostly uh, just inspiration from other artists and the look they have and something I want to work towards. You know, uh, people say that I'm a gifted artist, which is very flattering. Thank you so much. But as an artist, you're always growing. You're always learning something. And I dabble in so many different mediums and I never actually master anything. 
<laughs> I like to uh, play with everything. And uh, so I never really master a full technique. But I'm always learning. So you could be a master painter and still learn something new every day. <laughs> She's barking at something. <gasps> I don't know if you can hear her. She's, oh, there she goes. <laughs> she has this weird bark where she, she more bays than barks and she's not a hound dog. I don't know. I also don't know what she's barking at. Must be a squirrel or something out there. Yeah, every time I try to film, she barks now. So filming's been tricky. Hang on a sec. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what she's barking at. Driving me nuts. I'm trying to keep her under my desk right now. See if that will help. Okay. I'm out of breath chasing her. <laughs> Just adding a little bit of interest and texture here in some spaces. Just again, playing with the watercolor and see what it will do. I think I might add a bit of a brighter blue in here. Just playing with that color wheel and those ranges of color, always fun. Play with color, the amount of water you use. All kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so I'll leave that one. See, I can overwork purple too much because, again, I don't like working with purple. So I don't know when to stop. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that. Let's do this one. Maybe we'll do like an orangey yellow on this one. Now let's go into these really pretty kind of skin colors, really. Soft greens and peaches. Which could be an interesting contrast to this dark foreground that we drew. I'm going to add quite a bit of water. Let's do some pooling. And I'll go into this pink color. Let's see what we get. So again, it will only pool if the water, if the, your pad's straight, of course, if it's leaning, it will run, but it will only pool where the water is. It won't, um, it won't add water and run the pooling anywhere that you haven't added water is what I'm trying to say. But clearly can't speak today. So let's add some pooling water down here. And by pooling, I just mean like a little puddle of water. It's not fully absorbed into the paper. There's quite a bit of water that sits on top. It might be a bit tricky to see on camera. And maybe some wet on dry on this side. I'm trying to not put my hand inside the wet purple that I did over here. <laughs> Let's do maybe a touch of brighter orange in this. I mean, these would be so pretty just as little cards, just little quick sketches for greeting cards, you know? At least I think so. And they don't take hours. Unless you get into some serious detail. Maybe a 
bit more pink. I really love this soft pink. Of course, the pooling takes a little bit more dry time. So you try and be patient. So there I'm using pretty much dry on dry right in here. And it leaves brush strokes, which can also be a useful technique, especially in landscaping. At least that's what I found. Okay, we'll let that dry. So you can see how they, um, make sure I'm in frame here, sorry. But you can see how they create these really neat blotches and things and I really love the outline of the black pen and then you can go back as I've shown in other videos how you can doodle inside them some more if you want. I like to introduce the black element to the outside of the painting just in a sketchy way. Now you can make things pop a little more. You can add some new leaves which I didn't do in the original sketches I showed you but there's no rules here. Do whatever you like. And just add a few where they're a little bit more subdued because they've got the color in them. A little bit more depth even. Depends what you're looking for. So I really like the contrast of the black and white myself. And you can add, you know, textures in it. So like I said, I'm not gonna get into that today because it's it's very time consuming, but I just drew lines behind things to add kind of a contrast between the, the organic shape here and something harsh and abstract behind it. Uh, this I used, I used a black inline here just to pop the white some more. And then I used, I don't know if you can see the metallic paint on there. Just lots of fun, you just do whatever um, you want to do. You can play by outlining the the trace of the lines of the watercolor change in the paint and color. You know, you can add some interest there just by adding a thin line, breaking up the background a little bit. So I'm just going to trace around some of the watermarks. Do it this one as well. And the possibilities are, are endless. You could give this, the group of people the exact same instructions and they'd still come up with very different looks. And I love that. And it's all about experiments. So if you decide to try this exercise, I would love to see it. Share it on my Instagram page. I'll link my Instagram below and tag me and so I can see what it is you guys are creating. I love to see that. I'm just going to do some little dots in here. And of course, watercolor can be painted on top. So for example, if I choose, I really love these dots. I'll maybe wet this section here and load up some of that blue and drop it in and add a little bit more. Right? And let that dry. Well, I hope that gave you some inspiration. I hope it gave you some ideas of how to experiment, play with watercolor. Don't be terrified of it. Have some fun with it. Be loose with it. Approach it in a way that um, you're not, you break the page up and you, you start with little tiny segments of things. And I have several watercolor videos on how I experiment with watercolor. And I, I do hope it gives you some ideas. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. I uh, Again, I hope you liked it. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye.